Hello everyone, welcome to Club Deck Corner here at the Viceroy Bar. We haven't done one of these in a while, but it's all fun week, it's the start of the build-up and yeah, we thought we'd all to get together for a little bit of a chat. I am Scott Carney and joining me tonight is Ryan Haymarch, how are you? I've got a battle fever on early, Carney. Only Tuesday we're recording here, uh, battle fever's early for me, so it's going to be a long week on, so we Monday off. Mm. What are you here? Are you I was off, Ryan. Aye, Monday off. Well, uh, that we were doing right now. I'm just counting the minutes to the weekend, mate, and nervous, and uh, I look forward to some sleepless nights. Yeah, Jamie, this is your first time doing this, mate. Yeah. Well, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Well, I was actually in the office today. I can say that hopefully my boss doesn't. He would not give a shit. I had a lot of time, and I was doing the usual going back to the full games. Not a good idea. So, <laughs> and nearly I'm doing that in all time. I think. Yeah. I'm going to say that in the light for this, so I'll make sure he's out of action. I'll watch you. And uh, talking about sleep this night, Sally Pearson, how are you? Yes, You're sorry. a dad now? Nina? Yeah, my mum keeps saying that to four people. Congratulations. She's <laughs> 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 a dog. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yes, I am having sleep this night. That's taking a big off for you, just a little fun, to be fair, but she's done quite a good thing. Have you put a pause on? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, 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 very good. Very good, that's very good. Um, yeah, so yeah, we're at the Viceroy tonight. I say it's been a while since we've all got together to do one of these, and uh, yeah, it's all pretty aimed at the fact that we've got a pretty big old fun game coming up. Before we get into that, um, tickets for the live are on sale, and um, the link for the description will be in, uh, the, in the description even for this podcast. Uh, it's Friday the 31st of May, 7 30 to 10. Um, the Loudon, we don't have that to start. Please get your tickets now so you're not disappointed. And we hope to see you of you there as possible. Sorry, two seconds. John, John, I'll, I'll get you in two minutes. All right, she wants to finish this. I'll tell you when you're on Sunday. Okay, John, I'll be back to you soon, mate. Thanks. Cheers. So, gentlemen, we'll start tonight with me. Uh, look, pretty much is everything geared towards Sunday. Nobody really gives a month to what happened to the weekend to be got the win. Uh, but it's important, I think, to just bring a few things up about that. Jamie, you've probably know it. Ryan and Alistair and myself did the post match on. Oh, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not yeah, a yeah. 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 I don't know if we're quite ready. I don't know if we're quite ready to announce next year yet. I'm not 100 sure. But yeah, your thoughts on the game on Saturday? I thought, I mean, it was, I thought it was a fairly non eventful game, to be completely honest with you. I mean, I thought, um, I thought actually the usual kind of. It went two one, and you thought, oh, "Here we go again." So just not. But we found it even actually. I think Ali said on the post match was the fact that on Saturday the fans got the players over. There. They did because that was more than my house in fifteen minutes. It was class. It was definitely. <laughs> as as if that dragged them through the corners from itself. I just we changed the game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the goals that are, you're playing your way into the game Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Ryan, I think that was probably a wee bit too negative, I think, I think, on reflection of it and hindsight. And I always say this, I always caveat everything we do a post match. I always say, I'm fully emotional when I leave Ibrox. You're involved in the game, you feel like you've kicked every every ball, and that's the way it's going to be for the remainder of this season. I think it was the nervousness of 2 1, and the, I still stand by the absolute calamity of refereeing performance we were seeing. I was thinking he's doing his best here to get Hibs into this game. But looking back, we're the game back, we controlled it, we did. Butland wasn't really troubled in any way um, throughout the game, and I thought Matondo coming in and securing the win, securing the win the way he did. I thought, yeah, that's that's pretty perfect. That's pretty much all we were asking for. I well, Matondo coming on and scoring that goal he's, shows come on. He, he seems to get he has faith in players like that. A lot of people wrote after Abby Matondo, and I know as Ali we were always talking about. Ali said I, but a lot of people wrote him off. But, you, he seems to, I don't know why he sits with him and says, listen, I've got faith in you, you can do a job here for me. The confidence is wrong for me, adds a little bit to the team, gets it over the line. I would back it. I don't think, I don't think we were working. I think people that watch and take into consideration, as you say, the emotions, they're just out of the game. Yeah. Doing the post-match, still the hardest podcast of any post-match, is something uh, like something you look back and you know, I used to. <laughs> and that's it. So they're, 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 and I credit to you. You used to be doing it at home because all the time, but the hardest ones to do. But I was that back yourself. I think Rangers, but we always nobody didn't have an eye on this game Sunday. I certainly support us. All you're thinking is just win this game, and then you think that the old firm game on Sunday, and that's what it felt like because 
we didn't we didn't get that Hearts five 0 performance that we all wanted. You're kind of like mm, right, we're going to this whole fun game. No play the best, but they, they were good. But everyone knows up the levels for my first for Sunday. Um, it was three points and very much up the road again. Yeah, Ali was terrible at the podcast um, because I can never really get my words out every time of what I mean. But Ryan's hitting the nail on the head. It's, I know we step up. That was fine. That was comfortable. That's a three-one win. Come to yourself or not putting up against football. Things need to are going to need to go up a little bit for Sunday. But that was the warm up and for it to want to, to run out three-one winners. No matter how much of a calamity the goal was, and it was a calamity the goal to give away, it really was. But ultimately, you've got to take that and think we're in the perfect position now to go into Sunday. Ultimately, the race is in games of football, you know, the cup finals. It's not that how you win it, you need to win it. I did say in the post class that Rangers haven't kept the ball between our feet because of the Dundee game. That's right. Rangers have came back from the international duty break, and you've seen them slow and drop points. They didn't. They went, they took care of Hibs. Hibs, 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 Rangers, they can play Hibs are quite open. The Comrades is very actually open to everyone to that team. That's the Rangers, the best team in the league as well. So they want to just play so that will be easy. He's after not one ticket, isn't he? Go on, Audrey, I'll get ready. I'll get ready, John. All that money is on the planet. I think, all to the eye, you have to fly home, you have to fly home, but somebody said to me, I've always kept things on the you've got the Celtic game as Ryan says is one you all look at but you can't overlook the next game mm-hmm. and to me it was three points that's what we got and now we've got to, to obviously look ahead to but it's def- a different game for me you made a good point that, uh, he's I think that's what we still come in can't we see if players if players do it weird down the fans they have that wee eye over the Celtic game yeah. mm-hmm. that's when completely kicks in when you can't get fans down Maybe is that happening in the game? I don't know. Aye, yes, I hope I said it right. I thought, I think I was the same. I said on the podcast previously that it was, I was more nervous about Hibs, the Hibs game than I was about Aye. the old firm because I was very much trying to treat it as don't think about the old firm, don't think about the old firm because we all know what's about to happen. We all know how big a game it is. Don't worry, we'll come to it. We're going to come to it. Don't you worry about that. But um, I always stick with the referee in the bar. Obviously, we made jokes there about being. It's been released to be the ref for uh, Sunday. Obviously, there's a meltdown about it. There's already a conspiracy saying the game's not even happened yet. I think Beaton's made worse decisions for us than he ever has for them in terms of big matches as well. So I'm not surprised by it. But Ryan, this is just the start now of the build-up to this week, which will be constantly whipping out the... the what the, the, the cheerleaders, if you like, complain about how bad the referees are. We all know how bad the referees are, but it's going to come from one side. Oh, aye. <laughs> if, if, you if, we won, if we win, it'll be a conspiracy. If they win, it'll be... I but John Beaton was a ref, so he still tried his best to let you win the game. Aye. He'll never be happy. Aye, and there's a still circulate at him standing <laughs> a couple of times, which apparently... <laughs> You're not allowed to do is there anything? No, you're not allowed to do um, that. Are you? I, I know, obviously the flag as well, which they just don't click on to that was pure banner, but continue with that theme. If you think it's bad now, you know what's coming if we win Sunday, oh. you know how it's gonna go and all the Twitter and all that nonsense it's gonna go everywhere, there's gonna be meltdown. The club play to it, they will moan about the referee and they'll make a statement, they'll make a complaint, blah blah blah. I just don't care, Canada don't keep the referees either. I hate saying I say it's negative, but I just don't rate any referees really. There's the only referee I don't blame him. Like, I don't know your name because probably they're not as bad as the rest, but there's just we have got a poor standard referees. We've gone over this a lot. They need to go, they need training, and support, they need everything to get them to a better level, but just don't really keep who the referee is. It's only them they seem to be obsessed with who the referee is. See if it wasn't me, it would be Walsh. Probably gives a penalty one day. Uh, they're always going to find an excuse. So I'll start early. I'm just hoping our players and our managers just keep quiet this week and let them do all that to so get there. As you say, our cheerleaders out into the media and start these conspiracies because if we win, if we win some, it'll be a meltdown. Yeah, when we when we win the games, Jamie, and the refs bad, we will call it out. Yeah, I've called it out. On Saturday, I thought that referee on Saturday, um, David Monroe, I think it was on Saturday, I think that was the guy's name. Shocking, literally shockingly bad. But we don't create a song and dance about it. 
Should we? It's not in our DNA. It's not our style to do it. It's not our style to do it. And in a week we are, we should really be thinking about who's going to play and positions and things like that. I just think it, it's going to fall on deaf ears anyway. It's not really going to be a big thing to complain about this because what are they going to listen to? You? Not. No. The, the thing about it is, we always said this, that is bad for that city of Glasgow, of Glasgow because they are for the city of Glasgow. It's, it's the same. It's, it's the, the, obviously, Mark has brought in to enable them to be better at the job. It's kind of went the other way. It's kind of went the other way. It was disappointing. Yeah. And the red ag, the refereeing standards in this country, they need to be up. It needs to become form of training or something like that. But to answer your question, I just think, don't concentrate on that. Sure. It's never been a slide. No. It's never been a slide. You should just tap on the game itself. Absolutely. Ali, obviously, I don't know if he's announced this really on the point. Your dog's actually going to be the linesman on, on Sunday. Um, is the dog feeling up to the challenge, mate? Yeah, I mean, I would imagine he's already of the blue persuasion. But no, in all seriousness, Rangers just have to deal with their business. If we deal with a business on the park, controversial decisions or not, we win the game, then let, let them have their moment. Let them have their excuses, whatever they want. They have excuses before a ball's even kicked. And as Jamie says, it's not our style. We shouldn't get involved in that. Referee, I think the referee hasn't been great this season. They point to all the time. We don't. I mean, there's decisions in both firms we can point to in the last season and a half. Definitely went really against us. Mm. But there's no point that the referee won't be the outcome of who wins that game on Sunday. It's up to the Rangers to, to win that game on Sunday. Yeah. And if Rangers get, get beaten Sunday and they draw, we are not going to come here and want the referees. Or at least I hope not. Oh, well, we do it every week. <laughs> but no, 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 yeah, John's trying too quickly, by the way, in case you're wondering what that noise was there. That was uh, John was trying to be a bit too quickly. Yeah, also, listen, it's yeah. John just keep watching it. I'll let you to really hear that also. Yes, really, very much so. Uh, no, uh, you know, I think you've been all spot on about it. It's just it's this thing that always comes around at Old Fun Days. They make a, a song and a dance about every referee that they gets appointed to do an Old Fun, and it's just not something that we need to bother ourselves with. We've got bigger things to worry about how we perform, how we are going to. Um, ultimately, win that match. Um, so to get involved in referees, spits for pit for tats, I just there's not really any need which, for it. Uh, which is your favourite Photoshop uh, referee? You seen it? Go, the Nick Wallace one with the, the badge. Is if he's actually the Rangers training ground? Yeah. You seen that one? There's also the uh, one. That's my favourite. Yeah, 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 they put him up. How can this be? And you're like, ah, of course, the one with the guy's got a tattoo, and it looks like it might have like two or three stars or something on his arm. Uh, and it's like, oh, he's got five stars on his arm. Uh, and you're like, my uh, God, uh, somebody uh, sat and searched through uh, all these pictures. Uh, do you know what I mean? Like, Some are brilliant. Clicking through every brilliant. single picture. But the, the beating one that constantly raises his head, I think it's quite good. Yeah, he's just in a pub having a beer, and somebody's taking a picture of him. All of a sudden, he's in a Mason Lodge, doing it. Like, uh, it's like, uh, it's most of the It was the, the, the fourth official one at the, at the semi, the heart semi, when the fourth official smiled at, come on. Oh, how did he smile? Ah, yeah, he's like, there's somebody who was shocked at night. Okay, that was exactly. Don't smile with the Rangers, man. Don't do it there. So, so you're dead man face, please. Yeah, dead yeah. man face. Uh, there's, there's loads of them. They just, they find them. Do you get any ones you can think of? Yeah, there'll be plenty this week as well. You're going to see it all. You're absolutely going to see it all. But yeah, um, that's what it is. Then John Beaton will be the referee. Millie Cox, the fourth official. I think Nick Walsh is in charge of one. Yeah, he's in the one in there. So yeah, we'll see what comes of that. Hopefully nothing. You don't want to have to have a fucking conversation about refs ever. But it's important to mention how bad the ref was on Saturday because he was shockingly bad. Uh, we, we're going to come to having the but yes, let's go. Um, another good one. Um, he still missed chances. He still missed chances. And I'm not being too critical on him, but he still, he still did still miss chances. Jamie's your boy, I'll come to you first. Mm-hmm. We've seen the Thermosema. 
Kamarov wasn't selected. Bizarrely to me, from what Clement's come out and said, oh, he's close to 90 minutes now, but he didn't actually make the bench. I don't get that. I'm not going to lie. I don't really understand that. Dessers looks like he's going to start. Should they start? Should, would you start him on you Sunday? Say I'm going to say my man's going to start. <laughs> Well, is that eight goals now? I think that's, that's eight so four more. You know it's eight. Uh, you know it's eight. I've seen it. So, no, I mean, like, the roof one's strange because we chatted about it on the Friday pod and we all thought he's going to come in and play to some extent. I just start, thought, I thought, I just thought, yeah, but I just thought, back, yeah, I just thought, right. if, you're, if you're going to want come out with the play apart in Sunday for the old form, Surely it would make sense like to get uh, 20 minutes, 25 minutes in his legs. If he's close to 90 minutes, I, know. I don't know how, I, somebody else here, I don't know how much it's just in that. We were chatting about it off-camera and I think maybe there's something going on in the background with that. Mm-hmm. And obviously, Seamus came back now, naturally he was playing off the left before he got injured, but he came, he came on at nine on Saturday, I think he did a job, he had a glaring chance to mm-hmm. score, so I just think, come on, he's Desers now, he's the starter nine and mm-hmm. Seamus is the, the backup. The one thing I like about the Dezers, he had that, he had the chance to set the half. We and Nicky said on, he said on the WhatsApp chat, because obviously I was picking him up after he scored and all that, and he, and he missed that chance and he came right on. <laughs> but I mean, that's what you're getting. Yeah. We've said this all season since he came in. He's an absolute enigma. He, he sums the word up the, down the tee. So he, he's going to start. He's, he, I think he looks that. He looks like as I think he be pressing well on Saturday. So... He's, he, he basically has to start. There's no, there's no one else at that level, so he's he's going to be in there. He's going to score twenty eight. I hope for me. I hope for me. I generally hope you're right. Ali, Ali. With, with, it wasn't the worst I've seen Devils, right? I'm not going to lie, it wasn't the worst, but it's still in my head. I'm going to win this chance for him. If this chance for him. I've got the real fear that he's not going to take it. And I, I hate we made his finish, honestly, the cross from Campbell and his finish, brilliant, absolutely superb. Great goal, really, really good goal. However, I'm going the later chance he got later on in the second half, and I'm like, you have to score that. And he puts it wide. Uh, it's, it's a concern for me, I'm not going to lie. Mm. That's what it is. People only remember the misses at the end of the season. That was the misses. I mean, I've said this. I wouldn't have said the chance was a sitter. But you at he's least got, got a hand on it. He's got a hand on it. He needs to back it. He comes his man really well. Yeah. yeah. He's got a hand on it. He's got a hand on it. He's got a hand on it. Hard, yeah. hard work done. They just push it. Nah, I'll just leave it. Yeah. But he, he does it. He always does a hard work. Yeah. I mean, take away the one that several days is going to take the stats on paper. The stats are good. The stats are good. In terms of a striker. Um, obviously, we see him and he needs some few chances to score. Use the ones he needs to think about when he's got time is the ones he fluffs, the ones he doesn't need to think about he scores. So he's a bit of an actor, but he's a guy from the middle of the I can't see the middle of the middle of I know Silver, for me, wasn't great at the weekend, but I can't see Silver for the middle of the middle of the so he will start for the middle. Um, we just don't know what this is. You don't know. I mean, he can come up with the Sunday and talk to those guys. Yeah. But it's a panicky. No, no. Don't know what you're going to get. Why are you getting something to sell? Yeah. Just don't know what you're going to get. But ultimately, if he starts, I think he will start. I hope we're 100% behind him because he's a guy that has five of us to win that game. Without being over dramatic about it, Ryan, I think it's not saying for Dexter's, but this could be the making of him or the absolute breaking of him. See if he has chances like he did in the last previous old form um, that we played, and he does the same thing again. There'll be certain fans that that will be it. It will be that will be no more. Especially if Rangers don't want to win the game, and that's the chances that everybody's talking about after it. It will be very much the end of the road for him. However, does the guy deserve the chance now? Does he deserve the backing for us? Do we have a choice but to play him and just completely get behind him and hope that he has a good day and not a has a. Well, Plays for nine for what's it Stevie said? Plays nine one minute to the other. Let's hope he does eight minutes of nines and ten minutes of twos. That would be good. I think I, I said we need a kind of reconversation with Dessers, and I said to boys, I think he deserves to play you now. I've changed my mind. I don't. I said I think it was last week. I just said if Roof's fit, I play Roof against them. And after Roof not even in the squad, and then Dessers comes again, you think, well, do you know what? Like, 
you can't, there's no getting away from this. As you say, stats are there. Are we frustrated because we don't have another striker who's maybe coming off the bench and taking a bit of pressure off him and he's not scoring as many chances as we'd like? See if he's got all his chances. He's playing the Premier League. No, he probably. Or the Liga. Or the Premier League. I, think, I think we do forget as well that we're all chances. Oh, God. Do you know what I mean? It took him a long time to score against Celtic. I think, it's, I think it's how easy the chances are. I think it's there. I mean, there's some crazy Saturday matches, like really bad ones, and that, that, that one's come up on Twitter. The one at Celtic Park where he wasn't even ready to shoot. He no. was just shepherding the ball through. Yeah. Just things like that, they really frustrate you, and they seem to be big moments. However, there in the past, he's got... How many goals he got now? Eight. He's got eight. He's got eight. 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 Jimmy's got the start for the back of his island. Aye. Hey, I think it's 14 goals. His XG is... Um, I think that... I think he, he deserves his chance. As Alice says, we're like, all back him up. Completely back a guy at the game. Um, but I think that... I can't they just... It's in the past. Now, his chance that he missed are in the past. But there's just a kind of... The, the stage is set for him. If you want to look at that way, he needs a big game. There. He needs a big goal. For us to for that stigma to leave him because you think of that chance against Celtic, you think of the misses he's had. If he scores on Sunday, that that goes for me. That goes if he scores a win on Sunday, it goes. You're all on the desk. I'm, I'm coming for you, man. I'm, you get, get the best 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 I'm all over it. I'm all over it. I'm all over it. You're getting the cardboard cut out of this at the end of the season mm-hmm. live live show. So the stage is set from for me. It's, Proved he can score goals against other teams. He is frustrating, but he needs a big goal now. He needs a big goal in a cup final and all front game. And come Sunday, let's go. That's, that's a game from. You've got to hope so. You really do have to hope so. Now, this game's not really a case for. I think the biggest. One of the biggest problems for Bessels himself is that we don't really have another option. Obviously, Kamar Roof, we don't really get the situation with that. I don't think anybody really understands what's going on there. Especially with the comments, I just find it weird. Honestly, I was just like, ah, right, okay. But again, I'm not a scientist. I've got fucking no idea how these things work. Seaman's literally just back. I think it would be a bit unfair to fling him in through the middle for the old firm. So it looks like Dessers is going to be that guy. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see. I just hope it's a good day. Please D9, let it be a good day. Be the Nigerian, what's the nightmare? No, no, that rhymes with it means it's a good one, is it? I'll get one for me. You'll get one. <laughs> You'll get one. You'll get one for me. Um, I have to discuss James Mavenier. It's quite a James Mavenier thing to do. He missed a penalty and then scored from open play, which is a fantastic goal as well. It's a great strike by O'Malley and it's, uh, he becomes Britain's all time record scoring defender. Is that correct? 131 goals. Past, you know, yeah, something like that. Yeah, 131 goals. The best, best goal in the record for a British defender in history. <sighs> I run out of way to really. I mean, I know we've all had our moments, but Tav, I don't think I've ever really come for his head the way some maybe have. I, You're looking at me? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, mean, I just think I keep always going back to him. He breaks another start. He does another. He, does, he breaks another record. He's done another thing. There's going to be a massive James Tav in shape to win this team when he goes. Oh, definitely. Missed that pen. Well, really, you scored that pen. Totally. That's enough. Really? Yeah. So, uh, I asked you. But there's still people saying, when they score three penalties, even though the goal that he scored was smoke and play, yeah. to beat the record. Yeah, of course. And, and if you haven't scored, he's got to put the ball back in the net. I know. He's got to hit penalties and he needs to hit pressure penalties. And some helps. And he's helped three kicks as well. So, uh, no, he's done well with that, but no. Again, he's got the stats, that's so high, it's phenomenal. He's scored over 130 goals for a right back, and all the assists he's done is, is crazy stuff. And you won't get a doubt you'll get a doubt that again at the age of that they'll, they'll do that as a right back. What, to a £50,000? £50,000 for the plug-in. That's what we're saying, though. Yeah. Um, and before that, he's really got a doubt what's for the club, he's a new, he's still just a new cast, but he's got a doubt with the lower leagues until he came to Rangers. Mark Walden, and Mark Walden, but he's, um, I don't think he developed a lot of his career to have, but to me, what he had at the moment, was he 32? 32. 32. I know you've uh, talked about Sound Bears. I know he's off on the street. Aye, I know you're saying that. I think it's a 
took the time over for somebody to leave. I didn't ask you, but look at Ali, like, he didn't get way up and go, do you know what, I don't want to like, totally burn out here to a point where the fans are like, get him out. Like, well, I could hear like, get the shots. He's a really good guy. I think if that, I know he's going to get the shots. No, 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 I'm more than they throw back, because his, his game is running the length of park, trying back. I think if, if, the, if the opportunity came in, he went, listen, this offers the table, I've just won a touch with, just won a treble with Rangers this season. I've got a chance to go to Saudi, finish it, and I'm a legend of whatever here. I think Rangers just take his hand, Ali. I think it's like that. Absolutely no problem. Absolutely. If you're James Tatton, it looks like this is the eighth season with Rangers. Yeah. I think he's going to get it down for the rest of the season. I think he's going to try and do it. Oh, I think he would be. Does he want to have him? He's nice. He's minted. Yeah, he's minted. Aye. Yeah. 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 This is motivation. Does he want to go to Rovers? And it is moving his family and all that. Yeah, yeah. I know he's got young kids here with very strong yeah. basketball. Or does he want to go to Saudi and earn ridiculous money and play in front of 300 people or something? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what does he want? But obviously, we'll come to that as long as it happens. But at present, he's one of our best players at the moment. I know he get major flack, but pull tap out. <laughs> you know, see, you know. So, Jamie, I, yeah, I think. Um, under Bale, I don't think there's any argument that Tavernier's mom had dropped off. Yeah. A lot of people say when he came back, he didn't look fat, didn't look sharp, like he'd lost a yard. It's amazing the difference that Clement has made in him. I think there's probably a mental aspect to that. I don't think James Tavernier's silly. He's been at the club long enough now to know what's right for Rangers and what's wrong for Rangers. Yeah. And I think pretty early on, he probably thought to himself, again, I'm putting words in his mouth, but he's probably thought to himself, Bill's not the guy to do this. He isn't the guy to, to be able to do this. I think the improvement in him has been spectacular and I think he's, he's bordering on some of his best form that we've seen him in. Um, I think Tavernier's been fantastic since Clemence came in. The guy thoroughly deserves his place on this team. I think he thoroughly deserves now his place in the Hall of Fame and you, you'd run out of ways to praise the guy. I mean, the whole Hall of Fame debate, I, I, I remember it was coming up, obviously, for a while when they got put in and people were saying, is there enough league titles there? Is there enough still going there? The, the, the petrified cup doesn't count. But see, now, even just dragging us through that, the, the league cup final against Aberdeen, Aberdeen yeah. going, things like that make a difference. So, really, like, as you said before, like, you're just running out of words to actually positively praise the man. He's just unbelievable. Mr. Jesus, now I make a point. I just think that when it comes down to what he actually wants in life, I think he's been a very good player. I think he's going to be one of the same and go for and go for ten years because you're right. He's made his money. I think you see how I think he's very close to John Bennett as well. Debatably, one of the captain being just captain of the time. So I think he put himself in that in that battle of I want to be as much as that. I want to be over the walls. I want to get to this many this many games. I have testimonials, one more trophy. So I think you can see it on both sides if he. If he cleans up this season and we all well, think that's going to be the case, he might want to go. And you never know, like, they might be an offer from the Prem or something. He's genuinely that good. Mm-hmm. But to go back to the about Clement, Clement, Clement's improved so many players in that team. Yeah. Tav's probably number one with John Lundstrom. Yeah. He just, he, he, he did look good for under but then again, so did the whole squad. Yeah. But I just think it comes back to the age old thing of we're just not there at what we've got to tell you. 100%. Look, Brian, I think well, a lot of people say he's not one enough, many, not one. As many copies as he probably should have, and whether we consider this form of legend, yada yada. I get that he did come in off the back of the banter years, we need to remember that as well. But the club was rebuilding, mm-hmm. I think he thoroughly deserves another league title. I'm not going to lie, and that's me obviously thinking, well, surely we can do it for teams that have never won the league this season, you know. But there is, there is, there is. There is Ways a, a guy can present himself when we're approaching a club and adapting to a club. I think he's he's bought into the whole ethos of the club. I think he's bought in even now, even more under Clement. I think he's bought into this what Clement is trying to do. And I think Jamie's I think Jamie and Ali are both spot on. I think he's looking at this and going, I could be written on the walls in here for the rest of my life if I keep going. And if I I reckon he is generally and I know a lot of people say, Oh, you're just going to smoke up tabs or whatever. I think one of the ones in that dressing room now will be going, we, we've got treble on here, and we're going to do this, and he'll be the one that's pushing that. Oh, I definitely was thinking that. It was, I, don't, I, don't, 
I criticised Darwin a yeah. lot, and I'll be taking credit for his turn and form, not to know what it was all to do with me. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. Um, yeah. Listen, Darwin will definitely go for a treble. He knows the standards in that club. You don't, as you say, rub shoulders with the likes of John Gregg and not know that you have to win every trophy at Rangers, regardless of whether you're favourite or not. You need to win every game. Um, I totally expect him to be seen really in that match in the dressing room, and especially after winning his one trophies with Rangers, so he'll have that hunger for more. He should have won more. Um, other than you can debate all you like about whether he's playing a good enough team to win it, whether it's, it's on him or not. He's grew a lot, he's matured a lot. He's always touched on the Europa League run where I never thought he had that level to his game where he took it to a crazy level that season. It was unbelievable. Yeah. And I'd love, to, I'd love to see it again. I think he's increased it again. Still criticised defensive mistake, but he's just know that if he could defend. Again, probably the same as Dessers, and he played Premier League. He would have been better. You know, I've criticised him for defending so much, and, like, and then the perspective is a modern day throwback that scores those amount of goals, which he would score goals in any league, there's no doubt about it. If he could defend as well, aye, he's going for 50 million or whatever you want to call he's it. Playing for, he's playing for a figure. What? One aye. of the top aye. ten teams in Europe, maybe aye. if he can, if he can add yeah. his, his defensive stats with his good attacking stats, he wouldn't be here. No, he wouldn't be here, but. I fall very much under the bracket of what I think it was Goldson that said after the cup final, people will appreciate James Tavery until James Tavery and Lake Rangers. Yeah. I'll most likely fall under that bracket. But listen, he does not add any stats, can he? He's I mean, he's a driving force, he deserves a trophy. Mm-hmm. If he gets that in this season, I was I think I said to you before when we when we won the league, that picture is tattooed in my memory of him walking away with that trophy because I thought, Do you know what? I have Richard Rotten, fans of Richard Rotten. You've got Pelters, got other fans as well. He's, like, I was thinking that Hibs fan run that game. Yeah. He probably so much James Tavernier. Yeah. You know, he won that trophy. He was one of the players I was really pleased for. And it'll be the same again. If we get that trophy we want to end the season, I'll be delighted for him. Absolutely. Yeah. I think if, I think he's doing it deserves it. I really do. He's also part of a defence that helped on top score today. He's only conceded 17 goals in the league. Um, as all season, all season, like somebody will make the comments or to get that. But I know, like, I think the guy deserves it. I really do. I think James Tavernier deserves it. He's. To me, he's a legend, a legend this club, and uh, he's my dad, he's, he's due. Even when I was starting to be James Tavernier, a wee bit of digs and whatever else, my dad was just like, not a chance. He's like, you've got no idea how good he is, considering my dad's been some utter garbage at Rangers over these years. Uh, he's like, you've got no idea how good that guy is. But no, congratulations to James Tavernier from all of us, because we obviously he watches a podcast. <laughs> don't we? Let's be clear, right from one side to the back to the other side. It's going to be a crucial. Let the left hand side of us on Sunday is huge. It's absolutely massive. We're going to need to get it right. Bonabas is playing Saturday. I think they'll all agree that he wasn't particularly great. I don't think he had a very good day in the office. I think he looked short of fitness. I think he looked short, probably short of match fitness more than anything else. I didn't think he was great. I don't want to see him line up for Rangers on Sunday. I think probably all of us agree. Yeah. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I was just being sure. Before, before, leads to the debate of, and we'll come to who's going to play in front of him as well. The left back situation, we all want Advan to be fat, right? If he isn't, is it Sterling, right? Oh, God, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. I, I, do you know what I wouldn't? If I see Fred Van's fat and, and Clone. Benches them and play Sterling. I'm not worried because I just think Sterling is just. He's seen him in the corner. Go, How long has he won for the weekend, Sterling? It, for me, just immediately just slotted in, composed on the ball, yeah. positive on the ball, tracking that. And I, like, I wouldn't be if he if he lines up left back on Sunday. I'm worried. So yes, I'd prefer Ridvan, but Sterling play. I'd play Sterling anywhere. Just he's a player that we I the fans trust as well. He just. Mm-hmm. He's just such a good footballer, and um, I he's left back then. Bring it. Yeah, I think if Jamie if Red Van's not fit, I think Sterling's probably probably the best choice that we can do. Mm-hmm. However, I kind of want Red Van to be fit because I do think Sterling could be utilised somewhere else on the pitch. Yeah, um, which some play will come, come come to as well. Um, the only bit that gives me the fear with Sterling is that he tends to quite like a tackle. Mm-hmm. And a kind of heated environment, and he's going in full gung ho mm-hmm. with the full of Ivory having a cheer car, quite hard tackle. I've got the fear of how the refs, and I know I shouldn't be thinking like that, but I've got the fear of how the refs would react to that. But 
there's just no way Barisic can start on Sunday. It just doesn't. There's not like I'll like, back up. He didn't look fit on Saturday. It was just I saw him. Totally no. really short. I mean, obviously we were chatting about the goal off camera. Really, his ball and it starts there. Starts there. The, 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 the obvious pass is to play that ball yeah. inside. Every yeah. about so there's forty five thousand people in yeah. Ibrox can see yeah. it. Screaming. He's like, give me the ball. Give no. me the ball. No. Barisic goes, no, no, no. You I'm just delayed that I may never get that ball in a Barisic gift for Ali again. Every time ball in a Barisic, what is it? I'm at this. Yes, I tell the back of it. Thank you, mate. He makes a successful pass and I get that gift for Ali. I know, I know. But I think, on the whole, I just think he can't start. Sterling needs to be and a left back if if the Turkey still is just because even as you say even for the 10 15 minutes of John Hibs will get a lot of jogging down our left hand side especially when it's still 2 1 and it was, just, it was a, a bit of sneaky bum time but he came on and he just settled into the game even even offensively going forward too he's he probably likes to play well but just solid but I think that's a great point I think he I think the modern mate say don't fly in tackles in the first five ten minutes especially in that you know what's going to be like so oh, if the one's going to get cheered, yeah. every tackle's going to get cheered. So yeah. it's going to be that way. So he needs to, he needs to keep it cool if he's going to play left back. Does it take a wee bit away from his game? No, if you do ask him to do that, Ali, do you think it takes a wee bit away from what he is? Because he is, he is gone gold, don't get me wrong. He's into tackles and he's not scared to put himself into a mm-hmm. tackle, which I quite like in a player. I do, I'm not going to lie. As long as he's doing it in the right way. But he did get sent off for standing in somebody's toe. So you are, you are a wee bit like, oh, do you know what I mean? As VAR slows this down to like a, 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 the tiniest of speeds and it looks like he's maybe clipped the player before that's the only bit that maybe worries me about Sterling but I would have no there's no way that Barris is going to play over, over, over him at left back but again we don't know if Red Van's going to be fat Barris is going to play at that left hand side from number 5 yeah and it, um, still on the left hand side would terrible because of Barris is fine some of the play but Barris is fine and then he'll come Sterling for me, I if if, if you can get Yilmaz to make it, he's got to do that. But I think you Yilmaz plays it up and Sterling plays from the Somewhere else, part. yes. But for me, don't take that question away from the Sterling. Um, you'll say to him, you'll say to the rest of them, just because we cover here, we switch on. But how many times have we owned it that they just been that soft? And you get a guy because we want everyone to go, ah, fucking sobbed it. Do you know what I mean? Like, charged. And what's wrong with that? For years, for years, Celtic have came to have came to Ibrox and they've played a marker in us. Yes. We, a lot of us are a lot better now, but Sterling's the one, one guy that will put that challenge in. And you, a lot of those terms are like that. It takes. Five minutes and then it has to be another front game where somebody puts a challenge in. Set it on. Set it on. Set it on. When you're out. They're not lying down to it. So, yeah. a guy that's in the middle, don't take it away from him. But, obviously, stating the box cover, but I like that part of this game. It's something like I say, there's a must. We'll continue on the left field. We've got Alex up and back. TV Silver playing in front of Barish. Silver wasn't great. It really wasn't. Again, I think that, I think, Barish has probably played a part in it, but I still don't think Silva was really on what we could expect, especially coming off, coming off, coming off, coming off the the international break that he had. But he, he seemed to put in, yeah, a couple of goals. I think he scored yeah. off him in the back the international break. I expected a wee bit more from him, but that's another reason probably why if he was say a third bad because Barish was there. Another reason for Barish not to play. That's, yeah, honestly, I'm so sorry. Nicky Owen's going to be. Disgrace that we're bashing Barisic so much and he's not here to join in, by the way. Um, but I think it's true that Silva, does he, one, does he start on the left for you? Do you continue with him there? And we need more from him. We more. He was poorly against him. Uh, Barisic didn't help him. But he, he wasn't was great good. against him. Yeah, I was going to say that. He wasn't great against him. They, they really looked to him because he had a few bit out and didn't take it out really well. Probably the best game I've seen in the years of the day, looked at him and mollified him. But you look at the left hand side, Schema does he start? Dutto, I think so, I don't think he's fit enough. Matondo, do you start Matondo? Me, no, I think he's been Matondo on the 20 minutes to go. Well, he's got space for that, and uh, he's lightning pace. You see me there with the So, yeah. to me, I start from. Guy good for that. He has a good player. 
always been yeah. I used to have the games we saw been great, but I think he's a guy that would thrive against Celtic um, in terms of what this game means, in terms of if we win it, ultimately we're going to be, but I asked it with my left hand side. Yeah, yeah, Jamie, for you, like we saw when I left hand side, and obviously we all know he was the greatest on Saturday. Um, I don't think Rangers as a whole were the greatest on Saturday when we got the job done, but I, I did think he was particularly quiet. Yeah. Or anything that he was trying was a bit of a, a fail. He gave the ball away a lot. Mm. And, and actually, his, his standard has been that high. You're not really used to seeing him doing that, especially since he's come in and played the left, which, which his first three games he was absolutely brilliant. Um, I do sign up to the Bonner, kind of let him down a little bit. The Bonner was doing the usual, not getting fit enough. He was just, he was just looking under it. So there wasn't any interplay between them, which there usually is between him and Ben Van Yelva. So mm-hmm. I just think. He needs to stay in. I agree with Ali. That he's a big game player as well. So and the running down of Seymour or Matondo late on, if we really need something, or if we just need that final goal, I think that's where to go. Yeah, and I don't think Matondo should start. I don't think he's ready to start an old one, to be honest, because I do have a bit of fear about Matondo that if things aren't going to plan, and we've seen it in previous times, and they're not bashing him, it's just what happens. He tends to keep himself quite quiet and keep himself out of the game. Silver's got more of a swagger about him. He's got more of a presence about him, I find. I think it'll be somebody that they will probably not fancy their chances going up against either. At Alistair Johnson, we probably not fancy it. Well, that's what you need to hope anyway. I think it's important to stick with him, uh, but I, it's going to, we need somebody behind him that's going to support him to let him be at his best. Hi, it's Daniel Mars. 100%. He plays, he, he plays football. It has to be young man. Aye, that's been, if you look at the left hand side and you think of Silva, what he had behind him in terms of Bonner Barashes, was he unfair or uninterested or committed elsewhere because of the rumours about Travis and Sport, whatever he thinks about his next move now, is he kind of on the wind down the way when you're kind of leaving a workplace, you're not as committed as you, as you should be. Maybe one of those ones. Silva came off right in front of me and then sat and I thought he just rejected. Was it just that he had a bad game or it was that he wanted the service and what things weren't coming off? It's done now. For me, Sima isn't, I don't think, well, I believe he's fat enough to, to place the starter on front game. I wouldn't think he would be anyone near it. I don't think so. I think that would be a, a massive risk. I'll ask. I, I ask of him. So, Ridvan and Silva could be could be a threat. They're both footballers. They both like to pass the ball. They, the ground, you know, likes to come inside and that works a lot better if he's in Bono Harris, if you who wants to hit the byline or cross the ball from the Colton Road shop. <laughs> <laughs> I think as well, it, it, it's, it's, it's kind of twofold. Yes, I think he gives us the best chance to our left hand side, but I think the crowd, if we see the team before the game and we see Kielma, if we see Silva, you're going to go, mm. right, left hand is, left hand side's good. That's kind of what we all thought it would yeah. be, which brings me on to the right hand side. We've spoken with Sterling. <clears throat> Is that where you would play him, Ali? Would you play him on the right hand side? In terms of not to have near, I mean, in front of Tav. Or are you thinking more into the middle? It depends on who you spend midfield as well. There's, there's, there's combinations where you can play with Cosmo, you can play with the other. Cosmo's not great, he's a young boy, so we're not bashing with him, but he is a young boy. Comments for Ali bashing with Cosmo? <laughs> <Cert, laughs> absolutely <laughs> certain. No. Um, <laughs> But no, um, we're going into the trenches and Sunday, we're going into the yeah. win game for me. Who do I want to the trenches with me? Sterling, that's what I want. He looks very good, but he handles most positions he plays in. Um, but that side, on the right hand side, yeah, I played him. And that great take off for them has been suspect this season. I think he could get him. I think he could also come in and see a wee bit as well and shoot up the midfield. But Tav could have a lot of the times too. But I placed it on there. I know you scored it as well. I thought in the back of the I thought I'm not starting to say 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 I'm not I'm not starting to say 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 I'
Jamie, Sean might look at it as a wee bit too cautious, please sell it on the right hand side, mm-hmm. maybe it's not attacking enough. What's your opinion, John? I completely get it, by the way, I do. I completely get the, the, the kind of thought process behind mm-hmm. Sterling uh, since Sunday morning, since after the um, Hibs game. I've been thinking about what the team's going to be for Sunday, and I keep thinking to myself, Sterling now wouldn't be a bad shout because, as I mentioned, he's got so much utility in him that he can cover some amount of ground. He's quick all over the ground as well. There's a lot of sense in there. Yeah. I mean, he's got so many good points that he's he struggled to cover what, he, what his death point is. Like, so the thing that, that, that jumps out to me in terms of starting Sterling right is that you're going to have Maeda probably on your left. He's, yeah. he's a quick guy. Right? He's going to be in by Sterling's perfect for helping to have def- in a defensive setting as well. I just think running on the ball and actually he could give Greg Taylor at the back of what Alex said absolute help. So I think Sterling's a shame. If he's not, obviously to like come back as well one and he's not a right back we need to use him out right because we've all seen there and really he's a, he's a, he's a stick on McCausland he's he's just not played well enough he's not played well enough we all, we all want to see him do well for the future Definitely. he's not a young boy 100%. he showed what he can do at the start of the season leave him out this time maybe bring him up late if he's got if he's got a life to run at somebody but Sterling's the standard right shot I think both of you have made the comment there because you're a bit cautious about McCausland. I get it. I get it. I don't think McCausland is the finished article. I think there's more to come from him. And I do think this game is so unbelievably big that I'm like, is it the right time to be kind of putting McCausland into that? Would still make more sense? I mean, I weigh up the two of them. And McCausland, I do think he's got a future in Rangers. I'm not going to lie. I don't think we can solely rely on the guy going forward for next season. But I think bringing somebody in to battle him for places maybe slightly better than what he is, they two can kind of battle each other, improve each other. When there's, when there's competition for places, it tends to improve the player that's fighting for the same jersey as you. So I think there's still definitely potential because on the line for you on the right-hand side, is it a full house for Sterling? Aye. Yeah, the boy you've talked around. I, would have, I think before I come in here, I'd have been like, because on the right that I don't, I don't like the criticism he gets, A, because he's young, B, because he's a winger. A winger will not be his man every single time. No, yeah. Ibrox is the hardest man in the world, I think, <laughs> to make it as a winger because you need to be a man every yeah. single time. Yeah. And it might be a thing why we never really bring winners through, but for me, because I like the way he cuts in and he makes defenders come out, which frees up space for other players. And he also see that he comes in the inside and does that well. I think the criticism is over critical, but when I think of Sterling and what he's saying, he would be good at covering that. As you say, Matt, that Maida boy, his pace is unreal. On the left hand, he plays there. Sterling on the right, for me, more established. Is that fair to say? Yeah. In the Cosland, the aggression. I agree with you, Ali. I know for the game, you need it. Um, I don't worry about his discipline, Chan. I don't worry that he would get a red card. I think he's got a hard pass for him. I think he's been quoted the same that he would take that out of his game. But I do think he needs that. I think it's something we, we something that I've been having in the world. I've been like, we just looked down the cross. Yeah, he ain't what we can offer him. Yeah, no that chance, boy. No you know, I don't think he's going to win and nail somebody and try to like, go around the injury. But, you know, I'm not talking about before we start recording. See the five or six tackles and that's how you see people just trying to nick the ball. Like, make contact, be aggressive. Don't be scared to get the L one. I think he's absolutely to do that in the middle along with Mr. Lundstrom and Tom Lawrence. That is my man's good boys. Okay, so you're not playing on a bit inside? Aye, I've been five minutes from my head, but I want to say aye. I thought he'd drop in. He might play a Lundstrom, Tom Lawrence, that's what he'd be. Yeah. And he's a good thing about Sterling. So I've seen him die on the book. He's done that hard. That was my first ball. I'm drunk. I'm drunk. But then you've got to think about it. Rangers have to win this game. For me, they have to win the game someday. So if it's. I'm fair and I'm glad he managed for you to be alright. No, but again, Jones just had that from Scottish football. But what players would suit the interest in the game on that day? I worry, dear man, it's too early for this whole game. I think the Betsy could be in the Betsy package and get a better crowd, the expectations that are up where it's like I was. Yeah. Sterling, again, I know you're saying I'm a player in the right. I'm not too worried because he'll break the lines as well. See, so he'll the ball. 
He bombs up right, forward, well, yeah, yeah. which is great. So, yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting show. It's an interesting show. I, I, I thought we would all be in a show for Duke Down one day to start, right. and immediately I'm going, hmm. Rice thought we were I have just went, I've been going for Diego Andy and Lindstrom. But see, thinking back to the five nil hearts, yes. Lawrence, Lawrence played with Lindstrom and Ca- and Cantwell played in ten. Front, yeah. the summer of the league, probably, I think we spoke about before between those two. Unbelievable, and I just think Lawrence he knows the tie. Yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you don't so, want. You wouldn't worry about. See, if you had the choice, and said, right, what player would you worry about? I would see Tom Lawrence, Sterling, and Diamandi. I think we'd also see Diamandi. Worry about yeah. it. Nah, because he's young, he's fresh, he's new to this, so. I wouldn't worry about Tom Lawrence and uh, Sterling Blue Tender. Interesting stuff, interesting stuff. We're, we're going to be back on Friday. We're, we will do a, a club live and we'll, we'll, we'll turn the battle fever up to 11 for sure. As we always say, we'll, we'll get details from the the, um, the press conference. We'll, a more educated guess, basically, on what we think the starting line is going to be, but we've covered quite a bit there. Just to finish up, Brian. I don't really, I know it's a kind of obvious question, but I'll ask it. It's a must win for Rangers on Sunday, yes. Aye, it's a must win. We're speaking about Dessers. It's time for him to have a big game, a big goal, and a big game. It's time for Rangers to have a big game. It's time for us to have a big one against over them. Yeah, we had that game at the end of the season, which was great. Good to be out, beating them 3 0. Wasn't a friend there in that, but it's time to let Martin down one an important game. Currently, for me, Rangers, Rangers have to win. And I think if we do win, uh, the uh, outcome will won't, will happen. Um, but it's yeah, we've been we we've come back into this. And none of us expected this. Mm-hmm. I think even the most loyal fan probably thought we'd probably out of this. Yeah, we've come back into it. Why build up this now and not do it? Is what I think. So yeah, Rangers Rangers must win Sunday for Jamie. I think piggybacking off what Ryan said there, I think I think I was telling the players that the same. You've scraped yourself back into this title race. Go out. And- Thanks to my big movie heat as well. No, 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 no. It's not, I mean, like, we all know it's the it's of massive importance the game on Sunday. I mean that we were discussing on WhatsApp about whether a draw or not. I mean I can uh, you you guys have told me down now I can't draw mm, a draw, not the end of the group, but really the reason you want to win is you want to be a marker. You really want to win it, they want to go to the next game and try and get a high five. So Sunday's massive. Although massive, but this is the biggest one in a decade. Eh? Yeah, it's definitely one of the biggest one in a long time. Ali, I think it feels very much like that considering I'm probably not going to sleep now since we've done this podcast until probably after Sunday. But to me, honestly, I draw's no good. I, I honestly I don't see the benefit in it. I think they would be quite happy with the draw. I think we win, we get the win against Dundee, and I know that's too big if, so I'm not saying it's for certain, by no stretch of the imagination, but all of a sudden there is a gap there, and at this stage of the season, it's this stage of the season, to have five points going for the rest of the remainder of the games, you've got to fancy Rangers for that. Yeah, for me, right, we talked about before we come on here, Rangers have to win for to win this week, have to win. Folk can say, I get a draw, and they win the game, and they go level with it. There's goal difference where it is, but for me, Thank you so much to the Vice Royal for letting us do this. Thank you to Scott and Elaine, very much appreciated. The hospitality is always fantastic. They're superb for this podcast, so I do appreciate it. If you're ever doing Pates Road West, please pop in and buy a pint. You'll get a cracking pint in here. They're absolutely superb. For tonight, Ryan, thanks very much. Thank you, man. Really enjoyed that. I, um, these are my favourite ones. Yeah, they're good. Love them doing them. I've been on for ages, so yeah, really enjoyed that. God damn, I was having like kids and dogs oh, and shit. Oh, oh, life, 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 life,
in the lead up to the big one on Sunday. So now nah, the, the battle fever is well and truly on. So let's go and do it on Sunday. Absolutely, Master. Thank you, Rob. Can't wait for Sunday. Biggest game, biggest old firm, and like you say, years. Does it mean something that last year we played with really 3 0? That didn't mean anything. Yeah. That didn't just mean something to me. Um, and it's over again. Just do the work. We'll find them. We'll find them. How's fun with the We'll be back on Friday with Club Live. Hope you enjoyed this. Let us know in the comments. If you did enjoy it, we'll try and do it more often. But as I say, God damn us for having life outside of kids and dogs and things like that ridiculous thing and jobs I mean imagine that imagine that but holidays. no I know don't talk about holidays man you're on a shitty bag mate your holidays <laughs> um, but we'll be back on on Friday with Club Live until then enjoy the rest of your week I hope the battle fever stays engaged the whole week like it will with us we have been Club at 22 at the home of Club at 22 the Vice Rally Bar cheers everyone